We see the deal go through. There's been talk of this merger for some time. Let's just start with a simple question. Why now? Thanks, Jonathan, and great to be in the programme. Well, why now? I think we have been, as you said, looking at, uh, at BG for, uh, for a long period of time on and off. It was always a, a match that really worked well in our minds. Uh, two companies coming together. If you look at what integrated gas or LNG and deep water could be, if he would combine the two, add to that the capabilities that we have as a leader in two areas, this was always going to be a fantastic combination. Uh, now, what happened over the last months, of course, was that the macro environment evolved to a, to a point that not only was this a great logic, but it also became of very, very compelling value. So, uh, together with the value that we see in combining, the value that we see in the synergies, this became something that looked too good to pass up on, and that's why we, we moved as we did uh, in this period. Ben, just to follow up on that, you say the macro environment helped the, uh, the valuation of this deal. Is that an expensive way of saying the collapse of the oil price helped drive this deal? Well, of course, the, uh, the, the collapse in the oil price has done quite a bit for, uh, for the sector. Of course, consolidations always tend to happen when the oil price comes down and there, is a, uh, and there is a different valuation. The way we would look at it, though, is if you look at the combination of the two companies, what we could do with the assets, the fantastic assets that BG have, with our capabilities applied to them, we simply saw a whole lot more value in that combination than the market saw in the marketplace. So therefore, that value drove the logic of the deal at this stage. Ben, it looks like for Shell, this is a pretty big bet on gas. Why the big bet on gas? And as the CEO, how do you see natural gas's role in the next 20, 25 years in the global energy mix? Yeah, very good question, Jonathan. I think, you know, it's, it is indeed a, a bet on gas, but in that sense, the company is, is a very, very important uh, gas company as well. So we are about, at this point in time, Shell standalone, a 50-50 company when it comes to gas and oil. And really combining it with, with BG will not change that ratio fundamentally. So, yes, indeed, it will be a much uh, enhanced integrated gas company. Uh, but we see gas also as a very, very important fuel for the future. Bear in mind, this is a fuel that does 50 percent less carbon dioxide emissions than coal in power generation. And we therefore see gas to be a very, very important bridge or even a destination fuel for many decades to come. So we think a bet on gas is a good thing. Is this sign seal delivered? Do you see any big hurdles going forward to get this deal through? Well, there will be, as with any deal of this magnitude, there will, of course, be approvals that we will have to go through. Uh, so the key approvals that we have identified are, of course, Brazil, because that's a, a very large uh, portfolio, Australia, China, and, of course, we will have to go to Brussels as well. I think the key ones are going to be uh, the, these four, probably with Brussels being the least uh, complex one, because the, the overlap is, uh, is, or the complementarity is easiest in Europe. It will take time, Jonathan, uh, but we are confident that we will get through this, otherwise we would not have embarked on it. It will take us probably until early quarter one next year before we can complete. Ben, I just want to talk about the price paid very quickly as well, £47 billion. Pounds. Do I look at that or do I look at the premium? If I look at the premium, it kind of looks a little bit expensive, a 50% premium. I was looking at some of the deals through the Bloomberg data. Anything over $10 billion typically in this sector carries a 40% premium. What was the thinking and the price paid? Well, you have to really look at this on the basis of, uh, of a net asset value play. So you, you look at the NPV of the assets, how it's being valued at this point in time, what that NPV would be worth, or rather what these assets would be worth if they were combined with ours. That's the way you typically do this on large E&P deals. Now, this is a super large E&P deal. But if you look at it that way, you look at what this asset set is worth for the combined company and how it's being valued in the market, there is a huge gap in valuation. Now, some of that you have to give, of course, to shareholders in the form of the control premium. Uh, but the premium really is resultant. Now, again, if you look in the sector, a premium of 50 percent is pretty much sort of middle of the road. But if you look again at what it does for the sort of the key metrics of the company, you will see it is immediately going to be accretive in terms of operating cash per share. Earnings per share is going to be accretive from 17 onwards, significantly accretive 
from 18 onwards. And in terms of free cash flow, it's going to be very seriously accretive almost immediately as well. And that, of course, is driving the logic of the deal, together with the fact that we'll use this as a springboard to divest significant parts of their large group to make it a much more focused company and return that to shareholders as well. Yeah, Ben, you talk about earnings per share. Of course, that might be flattered somewhat by that $25 billion buyback between 2017 and 2020. What is the thinking behind that buyback? Well, the thinking is as follows. We want to have not only the sort of basic logic of putting two portfolios together and then really work the value out of it by the capability of Shell, we want to have also this deal as a springboard for making the company much more focused, much more simple, much more straightforward. So what we aim to build is a company that has three core pillars, a very, very strong world-class deep water business, a very, very strong world-class integrated gas LNG business, and then some very, very strong cash engines as well, each being able to do up to $20 billion of cash per annum by the end of the decade. And then there's some long-term options. Now, what we're going to do is, is significantly streamline there for the existing portfolio, and we think that about $30 billion worth of assets will be sold in that process in the 16 to 18 period. Uh, that, together with the increased operating cash, together with a much disciplined approach to CapEx, will basically make a lot of free cash flow available that we return back to shareholders. First of all, by dividend, and you know our dividend policy, but on top of it, a very significant buyback, $25 billion, which will offset part of the script, or not part, the entire script, but on top of it, will also start paying back the equity issue that we will have to do to complete this deal. Ben, I'm very sorry, but we have literally 30 seconds left, so this one will have to be a quick one. You're buying BG. Were you looking at anyone else when you were looking at making this deal, the likes of BP, for instance? Uh, we've been looking at, of course, a range of companies for a long time, but this by far is the most compelling deal we can think of, not just for us, for the industry. Ben van der Berden, great to have you join us this morning. Ben van Berden, the CEO of Royal Dutch Shell.